There we go. All right. So good morning. Today is uh, Monday, August 28th. And I was laying out the plan for the next two weeks, which actually will be up through September 11th, because a week from today uh, is Labor Day and we will not have any class or lab on that day. Uh, just to read, just to go through this again, uh, the lecture, if you are in ES 1060, is Monday, Wednesday at 9 a.m. And you can meet in this room, SM 137. You can join synchronously as we have eight students on, which is fantastic. Uh, or you can um, join with me asynchronously by watching this recorded lecture um, at on your own time. If you're in Computer Science 1010, there will be a third lecture on Fridays, which is also at 9 a.m. Same methods, you can join me face-to-face -face, uh, on Zoom synchronously or asynchronously. And then for everybody, there's a lab that will be held face-to-face -face in SM 135 at 2 p.m. on Monday. So for the next two weeks until September 11th, we will be, are you good? No? Okay, sorry. Yeah, give it, uh, if you want, just, you want to just come in here and just, just listen and then we'll do computers later. I mean, then, then we can figure the rest of it out. All right. So first of all, just to make sure um, I see my participants, would you guys give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? If I get one thumbs up, there's a thumbs up from Elisa. Thank you. Garrett says he can hear me. Uh, Rurik says he can hear me. So we are good. Um, all right. So I just, I'm, I'm assuming everybody else can. So uh, I'll go ahead and close that one down. All right. All right, so let's talk about this idea. So for the next two weeks, we have a, it seems like a simple problem, uh, but we're going to work it a couple of different ways and we're going to use it as, as a device to learn MATLAB. So I'm gonna talk about converting between temperature scales today. And then um, on our lab today, we're going to start the MATLAB onboarding system. Uh, the MATLAB onboarding system will teach you how to code using MATLAB. We'll make sure everybody has access and understands how to go about it. And then we'll spend some time for the next two weeks actually writing this code. So we're going to do this problem by hand for homework in class, and then we're going to do it by coding in MATLAB. Okay. And then later on, we'll do it coding in Excel. So we're just going to do this and do this. So it'll be good. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about the problem itself, which is uh, temperature scale conversions. All right, so let's make sure we're here. We've got it, yep. So first of all, um, in the United States, we tend to use temperature scale called Fahrenheit. And in Fahrenheit, in, on the Fahrenheit temperature scale, which is identified as degrees Fahrenheit, um, at one atmosphere of pressure, which by the way, here in, at, here at uh, Powell, Wyoming, we're in a higher elevation, so we don't have one atmosphere of pressure. It's quite a bit less than that, but uh, this is normal pressure at sea level. Uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the freezing point of water. And 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the boiling point of water. Okay, so in other words, the span between freezing and boiling at 100 at an atmosphere of pressure is the delta is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now the temperature scale that most of the rest of the world uses is called the Celsius scale, or it is sometimes referred to as centigrade. And centigrade uh, has, it, it uses the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water, except uh, that the boiling point, excuse me, the freezing point of water is zero degrees um, and 100 degrees centigrade is the boiling point of water at one atmosphere of pressure. Okay, so the span here, of course, instead of being 180 degrees, the delta here is 100 degrees, okay? Now, 
Both of these are based on a real value. In other words, the, the base of the scale is the behavior of water. And yet zero, the freezing point of water at one atmosphere and the boiling point of water at one atmosphere is not a physical real. It's not a physical constant in the sense that this is not a cardinal scale. This is called an ordinal scale. So it's just based on something that is constant. However, uh, it's not uh, it's not a, a physical reality. So the physical reality or a basis that would make this what is called a cardinal scale is something that has to do with the um, minimum entropy of a perfect crystal, which doesn't make any sense, but it's probably, it will make sense when you take thermodynamics, but we'll discuss that later. But the minimum entropy of a crystal of a particular substance occurs at absolute zero. And absolute zero wow. is a temperature below which it appears we cannot go. So as you lower temperatures in the laboratory, if absolute zero is right here, you don't ever really get to absolute zero. As you decrease the temperature, you sort of approach absolute zero, excuse me, let me get a little bit better view of that. In this manner, it's called asymptotically. So you can get closer and closer to it, but you can never really get below absolute zero. So for physical reasons, absolute zero is a physical reality. And to measure that, we use typically a scale called Kelvin, which zero Kelvins is equal to absolute zero. Okay, now the other thing about Kelvin is you do not use the degree symbol. So in other words, Fahrenheit, oops, see if we can get everything here. Fahrenheit uses a degree symbol. Celsius centigrade uses a degree symbol, but Kelvin is just a capital K. The size of a Kelvin degree is the same as um, a Celsius degree, okay? But absolute zero, and I'm gonna draw this out in a more organized way for you in just a moment, so you can see this, but absolute zero, zero degrees Kelvin equals right at negative 273 degrees Celsius, okay? Now, if you look this up on your, thank you, everybody's hearing me. If you were to look this up on um, an actual temperature scale, which I'm just gonna do right here, if you said um, zero Kelvin, to degrees centigrade or Celsius, Google will tell me that the actual value is negative 273.15 degrees, okay? But for government work, 273 works. When you do this um, by hand, you can use 270, just let me know which one you use. If you use 273 or if you use 273.15. When we program it, we'll use 0.15 because we don't have to keep doing the calculation over and over again. All right. Now, so a Kelvin scale relates back to a Celsius scale. And what about Fahrenheit? Well, there is another scale, which is called the Rankine scale. And I never remember if that's spelled with an E or not. So let me look at this. Which the size of a degree Rankine corresponds to the size of a degree Fahrenheit. Um, Rankine. Yeah, rank into Fahrenheit. It is with me. Okay. So Rankin, zero degrees Rankin equals absolute zero. And the size is the size of a degree Fahrenheit. I'll put this back up on the schedule in this on this thing in just a moment. And absolute zero equals zero degrees Rankin, which also equals negative 458.67 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna bring this over just a second. There we go. All right, so here's my numbers. Okay, so we have four temperature scales. 
We have Rankin and Kelvin, which start at the same place. And then we have Fahrenheit and Celsius, which um, do not start at the same place and yet have the same size degrees as one or the other of these two scales. So how do we convert? Okay, let's start with Fahrenheit and Celsius. Okay, the first thing that we know is, I'm gonna draw two little like thermometers here. We know that in degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same temperature as zero degrees Celsius, okay? The other thing that this brings up a question, just especially for engineering students, um, is what is temperature, okay? Because temperature is not heat. That's the first thing I would like you to know. Temperature is not heat. Temperature is a potential or a gradient that causes heat to move, all right? So heat is a form of energy, temperature is a potential. So one way to think about, there's a couple of ways to think about this. There's a couple of physical analogies. If you think about electricity, amperage moves based on a voltage. So heat has an analogy to amps and temperature has an analogy to volts. volts. The other thing is if you think about potential energy, like if you have a waterfall and you have water up here and the water moves down here, the, again, sorry about that. I have um, I have a project going on at my house, so I have to keep my phone turned on, but I, I, you know what? I'm just gonna turn it down. They can wait if they need me because everybody else seems to want to talk to me today. So let me turn this down just a second. There we go. All right. So um, if you think about that, the water flowing down, water volumetric flow rate is usually called Q. Um, and so we have a delta height. So water moves downward based on a change in height. And so similarly, temperature has a, an analogy to the change in height and heat has an analogy to flow rate, water flow. All right, so going back to this, we have 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as zero degrees Celsius. And also 100 degrees Celsius is the same as 212 degrees Fahrenheit. We said the, the span here is 180 degrees. In other words, 212 minus 32 is 180. The span here is 100. What that means is there's a conversion factor. I mean, the amount between the size of the degrees is 180 divided by 100, which turns out to be nine fifths. So in other words, a Celsius degree is nine fifths times a Fahrenheit degree. We also have a difference in base or scale. So we know that in each and every case, a degree to get to degrees Fahrenheit, if we start with Celsius, we're gonna to have to add 32 to it. And then we're gonna to have to do something else to it, uh, to the degree Celsius, which is multiply it by some number and then add 32. Well, the number that we're gonna multiply it by is either five ninths or nine fifths to get to Fahrenheit. And it turns out, that it's nine fifths. Going the opposite way, you would take, just rewrite this equation, you would take Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees and then multiply it by the reciprocal, which is five ninths to get degrees centigrade or degrees Celsius. All right, now, if you, the one thing I wanna to convey to you as well is that anytime that you are not certain, please look it up. I'm not expecting you to memorize this. Even when we have an exam, you'll have these things, formulas like this written on a test. And I actually feel as um, it would be irresponsible of you to try to commit these things to memory and then maybe make a mistake. So it's better to reference facts like this. So if we say formula for Celsius to Fahrenheit, I would like to see the formula. There we go. All right. So like you can see right here, it says degrees Fahrenheit is nine fifths degrees centigrade plus 32. And then going the other way, the formula to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius is five ninths times the quantity 
um, F times 32. So just getting back to our work here, I just want to point something out in an order of operations way. When you're going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you do the subtraction first, then multiply that difference by five ninths. But when you're going the other way, the nine fifths gets multiplied by Celsius first, and then 32. All right. So now that we know this is sort of the basis of the formulas, what happens here if we convert Celsius to Kelvin? All right. Well, we know on the Kelvin scale that zero degrees Kelvin, as we just looked this up last time, and we know that zero degrees Kelvin is negative 273. So this would be zero, and this would be negative 273, which means if we were to add that, this would be 273, and this would be 373. All right. So basically, our third conversion formula would be that Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. And actually, like we said, that is 273.15. Okay, now what about Rankin? All right. We know from our fact that Rankin is absolute zero is negative 458.67 degrees Fahrenheit, which means zero Rankin is going to be equal to negative four, and I'm just gonna call it negative 459, just so I don't have to keep writing the decimal over and over again, okay? So what does that mean this is? Well, it's going to be Fahrenheit, Rankin then is equal to degrees Fahrenheit plus 459. Okay, and so degrees Rankin here would be 459 plus 32. Let's get out of that, there we go. 459 plus 32, uh-uh, 459 plus 32 is 491. And here, um, degrees Rankin is degrees Fahrenheit plus 459. So that would be clear, 459 plus 212. No, 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 459 plus 212 equals 671. All right. So here are our four conversion formulas. Now, over the course of the next couple of weeks, the first thing I'm going to do is just give you some problems to convert between these. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is learn how to use MATLAB. And then we will program this into MATLAB. There's a point I want to make here for this particular assignment. Um, you may not use AI, okay? No chat GPT, no Google Bard, no nothing, okay? And that will be part of the assignment. In the future, we'll incorporate uh, some AI into our programming, but at this point, um, we're not gonna do that, okay? So right now, do you guys have any questions for me? All right, so there's a couple of different things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of temperature conversion problems for you and just show you how this works. And then I will assign you a list of programs, or a list of problems. So um, there's a couple of points about this. One of them is even though the math would work, degrees Kelvin and degrees Rankin have to be greater than or equal to zero. Any number that you put into any formula that make the Kelvin or Rankin less than zero has to return a um, not valid data point, okay? So in other words, if you do a problem and you get an answer and it turns out that the Kelvin or Rankin is less than zero, it's not 
a valid problem, even though the math will give you an answer because it's just a linear equation, right? If you look at all of these, these are all y is equal to mx plus b, aren't they? So, but don't let that fool you. We have this condition, all right? So if something returns the value of that, what does that mean for Celsius? Um, it also means that degrees Celsius has to be greater than or equal to negative 273. And it means that degrees Fahrenheit has to be greater than or equal to 459. And those are that's just called a condition, okay? So in other words, that condition has to be satisfied. So when we're doing these by hand, you just wanna check your numbers and make sure that none of those things happen, okay? And if they do, then the answer is not valid. It is. If it was le if it couldn't have less than 459, everything would be boiling all the time, wouldn't it? So very good. Yep. All right. So let's do some conversion problems. Let's start with um, degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. And when I write these out, this is also when we do a handwritten homework assignment. This is how I want it to. Um, I want it to come in. This is, I will post this to our Moodle page as well. Like I said, all the problems that we talked about today, I'll write them out today, but then I'll also post them to our Moodle page. The other piece is um, you will submit this through Moodle, through those homework submission things. I'll have a button for that. And um, I'm not sure this will either be due next Wednesday or the following Monday. So we'll we'll figure that one out at this point. Probably Wednesday, and then we'll keep working on probably yeah, probably Wednesday, and then um, the following Monday we'll finish up uh, MATLAB, and then we'll do the we'll do, we'll be ready to deal with the programming at that point. Okay, so let's say we started out with fifty degrees Fahrenheit, and we want to write that in degrees Celsius. Okay, well we use our formula here, and we say okay, we're looking for degrees Fahrenheit. We're looking for degrees Celsius. We are given degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the formula that we would want to use. So it's five ninths times degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. You do this subtraction problem for first, 50 minus 32, which is 18. Take 18 and multiply it by five ninths. And when we do that, nine goes into 18 twice. So that is 10. The answer is 10 degrees Celsius is the same as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's how I want your answer to be written. A number without a unit is not a, it's only half correct. Especially when we're doing conversions because we have lots of different, uh, we have lots of different temperature scales flying around. All right, now let's do one that goes from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Let's start with uh, negative 10 degrees Celsius. What does that turn out to be in degrees Fahrenheit? So now we want to use this formula where the multiplication comes first. We get 9 fifths times degree C plus 32 equals degrees Fahrenheit. So in this case, we have 9 over 5 times 10 plus 32. Here, this cancels to 2. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 32 is 50. And look at that, which is exactly the way you would expect it to be. So the answer is 50 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Exactly the same as before. If it wasn't, we would have a terrible problem. Oh, did I do 10? I did a negative 10, didn't I? There we go. So this is going to be a negative 18. So there we go. Negative 18 plus 32. I'm going to watch what I'm doing, don't I? And that's 14 degrees. So this is 14 degrees. So that tells me then that 14 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. 
The other thing is uh, I wanted to play with this a little bit about going above and below um, the zero because of course, since they don't have the same zero point, sometimes just like this, a negative on one scale can be a positive on the other scale. There's kind of an interesting point also. How many of you guys are from somewhere cold? Just me, you too. Okay, yeah, you are, you are. Okay, <laughs> so so, um, so if we take, let's say, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm from Butte, Montana, and it routinely gets to negative 40 below, 40 below zero. If we plug negative 40 in and we convert it to degrees C, we use this scale. And we use this one because we have the, so we've given this, so we say degrees C equals five ninths times the quantity negative 40 minus 32. Oops, there we go. So degree C equals five ninths times negative 72. This goes in eight times. So we get five times negative eight, which is negative 40, which tells us that negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit is exactly the same as negative 40 degrees Celsius. So that's a place where those two axes, the numeric values, if we were plotting them, that's where they would intersect. It'd be right there. They have different slopes. They have different absolute, they have different zeros, but they intersect. I guess my zero, my axis would be here. They intersect at negative 40. Okay. Or as I like to say, if it's negative 40, it's just really cold. It doesn't matter what temperature scale you're using. So there we go. All right, now let's do a couple where we convert. Um, let's just do a couple from, let's start with Fahrenheit to Rankin. Okay. If we have, let's just do this, negative 40 Fahrenheit is how many degrees Rankin? Well, we see that Rankin is equal to Fahrenheit plus 459. So Rankin is equal to Fahrenheit plus 459. So Rankin is at this point 419 degrees. So that means that 419 degrees Rankin is the same temperature as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then let's do one from, I did Fahrenheit to rank, and this time let's go Kelvin to Celsius. And let's say, what if I put in here negative 13 degrees Kelvin equals how many Celsius? Tell me before I do any math, what does that look like? Perfect. That is not a valid problem because Kelvin cannot be below zero. Very good. So let's try one that will work. Let's say 13 degree Kelvin, how many degrees centigrade? Okay, going back to our formula, centigrade plus 273. So that means if I rewrote this, I would get Kelvin minus 273 equals centigrade. So I would take 13 minus 273 equals degree centigrade. So that means my degree centigrade is going to be a negative 260. So that means negative two, excuse me, 13 Kelvins is equal to negative 260 degrees centigrade. All right, now it becomes a more complicated problem if, for example, you want to go from centigrade to Rankin or if you wanna go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, you can still do it, right? Yes, exactly, perfect. You can do it as a two-step problem, just like you're describing, do it from one scale to the other, or you can combine formulas and yeah, make a mess of everything, but let's go ahead and see what we could do with that. I'm just gonna, I won't do any more problems, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like, let's say if you wanted to convert from degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin. All right, well, the first thing we know is we have a conversion uh, from Fahrenheit 
to Celsius. So I could say degree C equals five ninths times the quantity degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. And then I further know that uh, Kelvin minus 273 is equal to, uh, I'll write that out. Kelvin is Kelvin minus 273 is equal to degree centigrade. So since these are equal, I can plug this in right here. And so instead of putting degree C on the left-hand side, I can say Kelvin minus 273 is equal to five ninths times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. And I can add 273 to both sides and I get this. Okay, now I could break this out. I could multiply this through, right? And I get five ninths degrees Fahrenheit minus whatever 32 times five ninths is. Seventeen point seven eight plus two seventy three. Okay, in order to keep this in the same number of significant figures, I would really want to call that eighteen. So if I'm not using decimals, if I'm just using two significant figures, uh, that would be two seventy three minus eighteen, and that would be uh, plus two fifty five. Okay. So there's a formula for Fahrenheit to Kelvin. And how about centigrade to Rankine? It'd be kind of the same process where we would start um, with saying, we wanna get this to Fahrenheit. So we know that uh, degrees Celsius is equal to five ninths. Wait, I'm doing that backward. Um, Fahrenheit, five ninths. So we would say degrees Fahrenheit is equal to nine fifths degrees Celsius plus 32. And then we further know that Rankine is degrees Fahrenheit plus 459. So that means that degrees Fahrenheit is Rankine minus 459. So since these two are equal, I can plug in Rankine minus 459 on this side equals nine fifths degree centigrade plus 32. And since the parentheses is not in the wrong part, in the wrong place, I could just say then Rankine is equal to nine fifths degree centigrade plus 32 plus 459. And Rankine is equal to nine fifths degree centigrade plus 491. Okay. So those are sort of the formulas that we'll be using. So what I find most useful, first of all, of course, is to have these formulas, but as a visual cue, if you draw the four temperature scales, I think it kind of fits together and you can sort of see how everything works together because you do have some common points on those temperature scales. Okay, do you guys have any questions? All right, so what we're going to do then is, and this will be due next Wednesday, and I will post it to the Moodle page. I think that's September 6th. Yes, due Wednesday, September 6th. There will be 10 problems. And we'll start out with, um, let's say, negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit equals how many degrees Celsius? We didn't really do too much with this. So let's say negative 15 degrees Celsius equals how many degrees Fahrenheit? Then we can say, um, 373 Kelvin equals how many degrees Celsius? 167 Rankine equals how many degrees Fahrenheit? Plus 
then we'll say 15 kelvins equals how many degrees Fahrenheit? 72 degrees Rankin equals how many degrees Celsius? Then how many, let's see, negative 500 degrees Celsius equals how many degrees Rankin? Seven hundred and seventy five degrees Fahrenheit equals how many Kelvins? And then how about thirty three hundred and seventy two Rankin? I have to make a point here equals how many Kelvins? And last but not least, forty five Kelvins equals how many degrees Rankin? Okay, so there's going to be your 10 problems. And like I said, I'll post this to the Moodle page as well. Then there'll be a submit button. Pull over here just so we can take a look. Okay, just like here, we had how do you access Excel and how do you access MATLAB, which is due today. So I'll grade that after school tonight. I always like to wait till everybody has them in. But um, there'll be a submit button like this in... Actually, it'll be this week right here because it won't be due till the middle of next week. And then we'll start working on um, the MATLAB onboarding program. So of course, the big advantage to MATLAB is instead of doing 10 problems like this, after you program it correctly, you can do all the problems you want. You know, you can just you can just do whatever. So that's the big advantage. And so that's kind of why we're going to build up to this. We're also going to use it just as a tool to get used to this problem and then to use it to learn MATLAB without having to learn an algorithm and a, an idea at the same time that we're learning how to program. So do you guys have any questions for me at this point? No? All right. So what now? Oh, sure. Like this? Okay. And like I said, yes, these will be the problems. And also, uh, just like I'll tell, um, I had a question in the chat. I'm going to answer in just a moment, but th this exact sheet will be posted to Moodle as well. So if you don't get it all written down, it'll be fine. Um, one of the uh, cyber people asked, the delta on the scale, is that the difference between the maximum and the minimum temperature? Delta always just means a difference. And so when I use it here, oops, here and here, that is between, it's the delta between the boiling point of water and the freezing point of water at one atmosphere of pressure, okay? Then I talked about it a little bit differently. I don't know if I wrote it down, but another way of writing the delta would be that one degree Fahrenheit spans the same amount as five ninths of a degree Celsius or conversely nine fifths degree Fahrenheit is one degree Celsius. These are also referred to as deltas. So delta just means anything that represents the, a difference between two points. Okay, good question. Yes, very good. All right. All right, any other questions? Okay, well, I will be in oh. SM. Oh, go ahead. Oh, where did that negative two come from with the 10 with, I think, the Celsius formula? Let's find out. Oh, that's just number two. That's just number one and number two. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I should put some sort of a separation there. Okay, great. All right, so I will be in SM 135 at 
two o'clock today. We'll get started with MATLAB and I'll either see you in SM 135 or I'll see you on Zoom or I will record the lecture so you can watch it later. It won't be much of a lecture, but we'll do some work. So that'll be good. All right, you guys have a great day. We'll see some of you later today. And I'm gonna stop recording now.